if we take a look at some images of hurricanes, this is sort of the current poster child of bad hurricanes. This is Hurricane Katrina. This is on August 28th, um, 2005. It's, here's Florida over here. You can see that it's covering the width of nearly half of the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the eye of the hurricane here. At this point, it was Category 5, which is the most intense category for hurricanes with winds over 145. I believe uh, actually Hurricane Category 5 is over 160 miles per hour, but you can check that on the Saffir-Simpson scale. An incredible beast, and we're all familiar with the damage that it wrought in New Orleans. A lot of that damage largely being because we had removed wetlands, so habitat destruction. Uh, we had faulty levees. It was really a perfect storm, not really from the storm standpoint, but from human impacts on the Gulf region here, Louisiana, uh, as well as Mississippi and parts of Texas and other areas, even the panhandle of Florida here. We're just unprepared for this kind of hurricane. And really, this hurricane, Katrina, three years ago, um, still people um, have yet to recover from that hurricane. So is this a taste of things to come? Some people think so. Um, and it's something that we need to be concerned about and keep our eye on and prepare for these kinds of natural disasters, particularly as the intensity of hurricanes may increase as a result of global warming. If we look at the deadliest and most costliest hurricanes, of course, the deadliest one occurred in 1900, uh, near where we just had a hurricane this year. Uh, again, Galveston slammed in 2008 um, by a hurricane, really wiping out large parts of that island. Still not sure whether that, and that's not on this list, of course, um, whether that hurricane uh, is going, whether Galveston will survive as a city or not. But in 1900, they were hit by the deadliest one, caused probably somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 12,000 deaths. That's by far the most deaths of a hurricane uh, in the United States. Of course, Hurricane Katrina so far has been the costliest hurricane. Uh, it had the third lowest central pressure of any hurricane ever measured, causing six to 1,200 deaths, a hundred billion dollars uh, of damage, which makes it more costly than, of course, the, the Galveston hurricane. Uh, a hurricane in 1928 in, near my hometown, near uh, Lake Okeechobee. I grew up in West Palm Beach, Florida, which is just a few miles, or tens of miles from Lake Okeechobee, um, caused 1,836 deaths. Category 4 hurricane. Uh, and second costliest, Hurricane Andrew in Florida in 1992. And part of the reason Hurricane Katrina's and Hurricane Andrew are such costly hurricanes is just the large amount of development in these areas, both in the South Florida region as well as in the Gulf Coast and Florida Panhandle. As more people move to the coastline, that makes coastlines more susceptible to costly damage by hurricanes. And so we will expect, as we throw more stuff up at the beach, at the coast, Anytime we have a catastrophe, it's going to be very costly, mostly in terms of damage to property because there's so much property now on our coastlines. Hopefully not so much in terms of people because we can evacuate people. We know how to create safe areas for people. And we also have much better warning systems for hurricane than they did in 1900 and 1928. So take a look at this figure. It's just more interesting in terms of facts, but it does give us some things to think about in terms of how we prepare for the future and how we develop our coastlines, whether we continue to allow unhindered growth along the coastlines, whether we continue to destroy wetlands that protect and, uh, and barrier islands that protect areas along the coast and even along the east coast of the United States. Those are decisions that this kind of table can help us make. Here's, as I said before, uh, the first, the earliest named storm of the season. Uh, this is subtropical storm Andrea that formed in May 8, 2007. So you'll recall that hurricanes aren't supposed to form until June 1st, and it may be that if this happens on a regular basis, that we have to continue to, we have to expand our 
definition of hurricane season.